Halo Infinite roadmap has been delayed. Attrition will return. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Because if you remember this from a development update from 343 after they, before they went into the holidays, they were talking about in January, they would have a roadmap detailed for us and have more details to share about season one on the event calendar, as well as season two campaign co-op and forge release plans and things like that. And well, it's not January anymore and we still don't have a roadmap. 343 community director Sketch said this in reply on Reddit saying, sorry to say this hasn't happened yet. You didn't miss it. The studio is still working to iron out details and updated plans for this year, which are taking longer to pin down than we anticipated. In the interim, we're still working to deliver light touch weekly updates on work items in progress via Waypoint. As soon as we have more details to share, we absolutely will, which does kind of seem to be the par for the case right now where it's like, yeah, it's taking longer than we expected. We need more time. And I understand that coming from 343, they are a large team. There are multiple moving parts when it comes to Halo Infinite, multiple things that are still in development right now. And you can tell that the team is kind of stretched for resources right now because we do know that they will plan to fix like the visors and Mohawk from the Cyber Showdown event with an update to season two, which happens in May, which seems so odd that we have to wait that long for an update when it comes to just like a simple alignment adjustment obviously it's a low priority kind of thing and they said it would take people off of work for season two which is like i guess kind of crunching for work for season two right now i don't know i mean like i'm not a developer so i can't really say exactly what the heck's going on over there the hardest part about making a roadmap for halo infinite like i said there are so many more moving parts and so many parts that are in development right now they might have some things like that are planned for season three but it could get pushed back to like season four or something like that and they just don't want to over promise and under deliver, which is something good to practice, especially from a development team, especially for Halo as well. Though I do feel like if development changes happen, we can understand that and releasing some form of a roadmap can give us some sort of peace of mind, let us know like what's coming on down the line, at least like in the future, what's coming. Like it doesn't even have to be like in a direct date, like December 15th, we're planning to release a new campaign update or something like that. You know, you can say that all these plans are tentative. These are kind of the rough outlines and just kind of let us know like what's the idea for content planned out for the next like month? What's the idea for the content from that plan out for the next quarter, half year, year and things like that. Just put like an asterisk on it saying everything here is subject to change and that would be very understandable as we've seen the community be understandable when it comes to Halo development as throughout the entirety of the MCC. 343 kind of conditioned the community to understand the it's ready when it's ready mantra. But the biggest thing I think is really eating at people is not the exact roadmap and knowing when things are going to drop, it's just knowing that things will drop roughly around this time. Like for right now, we don't know if there's gonna be new maps coming this year or how many new maps, or we don't know if there are new weapons coming and how many new weapons, what type of weapons and things like that. We just have no idea. Of course, these are all assumptions that we assume we'll be receiving new maps. We will assume that we will be receiving new weapons, new customizations and things like that. But the thing is that we don't know that for sure. The thing is just really just kind of like, just tell us you love us kind of thing, you know? Like we know you do, but we just need to hear it. And just to kind of echo what Sketch said, Joseph Staten went on the Twitter saying, hey folks, in November, I said we'd have a Halo Infinite update on our seasonal roadmap co-op and forge in January. We need more time to finalize our plans. So what we share is something you can rely on. This work is my top priority and we'll have an update as soon as we can. Basically, they're echoing what I was saying that putting a roadmap together is very difficult because you have so many different teams, so many moving parts. Halo, Halo Infinite is such a large game that's tough to just guarantee like this is releasing in August or something like that. Like we don't know when replayable missions are going to happen for Halo Infinite. Even a developer said, uh, well, you know, it's in the works of half replayable missions. Do we know when it's going to happen and when it's going to you know, go live? No, not at all. He couldn't give like a, even a rough time frame because that's just kind of how the nature of game development is. Like it's being worked on and they probably have a rough idea, but the hardest part about giving that rough idea when that release happens is something like this, where when it doesn't happen, the community goes, what the hell? But like I said, I think this can be alleviated with just good communication, good, fair, honest communication. In a bit of Halo Infinite HCS news, the 16 teams that were going to Anaheim are 
going to be finalized right here. We have Cloud9, E United, Phase, Sentinels, Optic, Pioneer, Space Station Gaming, and G2 Esports. And then you also have G1, <laughs> Complexity, Xset, Oxygen Esports, Fnatic, Incognito, We Love Anime, <laughs> and Push and P. Push and P is also going to be a, a team. These are the 16 teams that are going to be taking part of the regional event for Anaheim. Now, Anaheim is a little different than the last one we had for Raleigh. Raleigh was kind of more of a major is what they call it. This is more kind of, of a qualifier regional event. This is only North America only. And uh, some of these teams are definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. Definitely teams like Fnatic, Oxygen, Esports are definitely going to be something you're going to want to keep an eye on from the qualified leg bracket right there. And then also, I mean, the favorites right now going into this are Cloud9, which is be real, because Cloud9, ever since they won Raleigh, they've been absolutely dominating the online tournaments. They haven't lost a single tournament. They've won every single one, and not only just one, but like hands down, like won everything. Uh, but it's great to see like United and FaZe, Sentinels, Optic, Pioneers, and Space Station Gaming, and G2 Esports. Uh, I would say like Sentinels, Optic, phase and e united certainly can make a run for you know cloud nine's money but for right now i think it's it's cloud nine's tournament to lose at this moment the biggest thing to take away from this next news segment is that attrition will return the multiplayer lead andrew witz went on to twitter saying hey spartans the team is going to bring back attrition in a more consistent manner such as its own playlist or part of a new one down the road Thanks for playing and providing feedback on this debut. We love the mode too, and we're happy to see such positive response to it. So we do know that Attrition right here will be coming back in some capacity. Uh, it was a great game mode, uh, but there's nothing, anything I think I would see myself particularly playing over and over and over again, like a continuous mode that I would return to. Mainly I just play Team Slayer, Ranked, and like BTB. Those are like the modes I play. It's gonna be pretty tough to drag me from those modes, uh, just because it's really just kind of like Team Slayer, but with a bit of like a and circle battle royale kind of thing to the whole feeling to the whole thing but you can't even play attrition even in custom games which is kind of a shame i would like to see these modes come back and maybe have them in rotational modes i think attrition is like perfect rotational kind of playlist kind of mode or throw it into like team objective or something like that or like or quick play or something like that uh but have it as like a personal as a specific like all-time permanent playlist i don't really think so i think there was uh definitely some changes i think need to be made to attrition that kind of up the ante a little bit, increase the tension because when, at least when I was playing, uh, at least maybe the skill-based matchmaking wasn't doing this to me, but uh, I rarely came across issues with the circle actually coming into effect of the match. Usually a round would end by the time everyone was dead uh, before the circle even got even involved with the situation. And so maybe like increase that speed of the circle closing in, maybe change the location of the circle as well so it's not the middle of the map every single time. Of course, with these four and four maps, you could probably get away with that, but if you're going for like larger scale maps, probably not so much. Larger scale attrition would be pretty sweet, like attrition for BTB once that finally gets fixed. I think that would be pretty freaking insane. Now that would be something I would really like to play in BTB. But after waiting to see what happens, develop a new story. Once we get some more information about attrition coming back to Halo Infinite, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Well, let me know in the comment section how do you guys feel about this kind of rotational playlist tied to events kind of thing. Personally, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it definitely would get me to play attrition if it's a rotational kind of thing tied to an event like we had with Cyber Showdown. Uh, if it was just like a regular standard permanent playlist, it would probably die. Like I don't really expect to see very many people being like attrition players. It is a very fun mode. I like to see that mechanic being brought into custom games. Maybe when Forge finally releases, bringing in those assets to where you could create something really crazy with like a single life round base mode with a ring closing in. I don't know, sounds familiar, right? But <laughs> but uh, I think it'd be cool to at least bring those tools to the custom games, but uh, I don't really see myself playing it too much. So I think a rotational place is just fine right there for it. But also let me know what you guys think about the roadmap. What kind of content are you expecting to have for Halo Infinite for the entire year? Are you expecting just like new maps, new weapons? Could we get some campaign DLC, which we've talked about previously on the channel? Why do you think 343 has to delay the roadmap, the, the delay the news about the news of what's going to be coming for Halo Infinite? You know, let me know in the comments. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.